So as you know, we're going over eternity. Last week, we went over eternity. Any, anybody remember the three, four points I gave of why I think there's proof for eternity? Maybe, maybe you guys have better well, proof. Well, the first one, we all die. We all die, yeah. That's not really a proof, but it was just giving you guys the facts that we Jesus, all die. Jesus risen. Jesus rose. We have That's, a soul. We have a soul. I was a little confused still, even as I was speaking with, about souls, so I read more this week, and now I've got a better idea. But, uh, yeah, we have a soul. Something eternal in us. Um, and then uh, uh, Solomon so talks about in Ecclesiastes, said God has placed eternity in our hearts. So we have a little glimpse, we have a taste or a crave for it in us. We just know it. All right, so that's what was last week. Eternity. And now we're going to shrink it down into hell. There's two options for eternity that we know of. No one's been there yet, except Jesus. But we got two options, heaven or hell. And what is hell? I'm not going to say it, but what is it? All right, and that's today we're going to go into the topic. Uh, what is hell? I'm going to just going to give you a brief thing of something um, at least we know of today. We know it as a place or state of punishment after death for the wicked. All right, if hell, definition of today, it's a place or a state of punishment after death for the wicked. All right, that's our definition right now. Uh, but it's been, our, our understanding of it has been influenced by Greek gods, and anybody heard of those Greek uh, mythologies like Zeus and uh, Hades and all of these things, huh? Athena? But yeah, different, different deities, different religions, different cultures have influenced our view of hell and Christianity. Um, so the plan with studying this is for us to get it straight. Let's get it, let's get it straight. Let's get it figured out. Um, and to challenge what we know of, uh, Carla is the only one of us who's been to theological school. So she's studied. She's got a degree. None of us, not even me, have really studied. And I don't know if she's studied a lot on hell. I have never. Uh, this is my first time. So uh, if you have, chime in. We'd love to hear. You have it. Okay. Well, she knows Greek and Hebrew, so that would be helpful enough. She knows more than I do. Thank God. Uh, so, let's study, and I, I think it's a, an opportunity for you guys to lay, to bring a, out some of the things you know, and let's talk about it. All right, so the big question that we're trying to answer is that I think a lot of people are trying to answer is if God is really good, let me just say it this way, God, can God be truly good if he sends people to burn and suffer in hell for eternity? Okay, think about that. I've been wrestling with this. Can God be truly good if He sends people to burn and suffer in hell for eternity? Imagine that. Okay, I'm just I'm just gonna mess around with you right now because it's it's just done. And we're this is the beginning. We're gonna go through a few weeks of studying this to understand whether this statement is true, what the truth about hell is. But for now, that's the question that's going to be posed to you, or is posed to, from atheists, from people who don't understand it. How can a good God send people to hell to burn and suffer for eternity? All right, how long is eternity? A year? No. Ten years. A thousand years. No end. Burn and suffer. Okay? Is that the correct view of hell? And... Um, or not. So, in our in our searching, we're going to start at the very beginning. We're going to go all the way back to Genesis, and we're tr going to try to figure it out. Okay, that's a big question. <clears throat> so, before we get rolling, I want you guys to tell me, or I'd love it if you would tell me what you know about hell, or some questions you have about it, so that as we go through this. We can, we can bring them up. Um, we can bring them up. So I'm just going to raise this. So if you guys wouldn't mind, uh, just some things you've heard over time, something you learned, um, or 
or maybe you have a question about, hell, let's, I want to write them down. Anybody want to start? God abandons you once you go to hell. All right. Okay, hell. What is hell? Uh, abandoned from God. All right. Separated from God. Anything else? What do you know about hell or what do you have questions about? So hell doesn't even exist. That's a good one. That's a good one. Very common. Right now. I would love it. I, actually, honestly, <clears throat> I have a hard time with it. Hell is really, I mean, I don't even like to talk about it. So, oh, that's crazy. You know, so we're going to study it, though. We're going to get, we're going to figure out. So what? So the question now for the new guys is, what do you know about hell, or what questions you have about it? So as we go through the study, we can bring them up. Um, one I had is, uh, do all people go? Everyone who doesn't believe in Jesus, do they all go to hell? All right, so questions. you got to have something. All right, let me pose a question to you, just as you're thinking. Say in the army, <clears throat> a guy jumps on a bomb to save the comrades around him, and he dies, does he go to hell? Depends on how he lives his life. No greater love than one would lay down his life for his friends. Does he go to hell? Yes, yes. No. No. That's pretty amazing. I don't, I don't know if I could do that. but Just, just throwing out questions. Who goes? Where is hell? Here. Hell is on earth? In the lake of fire. Lake of fire? Location. Where is, yeah, where is hell located? Location. Anybody know? The center, the center of the earth. Center of the earth? All right. <laughs> so confident, Jason. Location of hell. What other questions? The or size some, of hell. The size of it? How big is it? What? I've heard that there are different realms. Okay. Uh, so think of all the people. I had I heard that there was something million people died every year or every day. Some hunt, some in the United States alone, it was some thousand number died every day. How many of those people make it into heaven? How many make it into hell? Which one's bigger? <laughs> How big is hell? If it's in the middle of the earth? All right, yeah, anyway, just think about those things. Um, what other questions do you have? Is there, a, is there a waiting period between After death and hell? Limbo. Purgatory? Limbo? What? Is there a limbo? <laughs> Limbo. I'm just throwing up ideas. Yeah, we're just throwing up ideas. Really I'm, I don't know. <laughs> Anything else? Is it really fire? Is it really fire? Yes. Alright. <laughs> Could it be ice? Alright. Or ice. Alright, so there's some scriptures we're going to read. It says, where the worm does not die. We're going to read some scriptures in there. What if, I also have I've always wondered what the weeping and gnashing of teeth. Yeah, is. that's a good one. What is weeping and gnashing of teeth? Nice. So, anything else um, about hell? Is hell just separation from God? Is it, does it even exist? Uh, where is it located? How big it is? Does it have different realms? I've heard that there's, like, in heaven, there's, at least it's, there's said to be different 
realms, like, you know, for people who've done more than others, stuff like that, you know, you don't, we're going to talk about that when we get to hell, heaven, but what about hell? What about, is there a different place the Satan will be than just someone who didn't believe in Jesus? Or are they getting the same punishment? Is it like for sure eternal? Is it really eternal? Because yeah. of Jesus. Is it really eternal? Okay, what, what do you mean? Like, he came back from it. So, he did. Come back he, he, did. he, came back he back. took the keys of hell. Hades. Is hell Hades? And if he has the keys, can he just... Maybe he just undo it. We're going to talk about that. That's good. So... Obviously, there's some questions. Steve, get us something. What do you think? Anything? Question about hell. If you, if you have something. Do you think everyone who doesn't believe in Jesus is going to go there? No. That's a hard question. Do you think that... Um, do you think that people who who don't believe in Jesus are going to get a second chance after death. Like somehow, in purgatory or limbo, they're going to get a second chance to confess. I think different people are going to get judged differently due to the fact um, like some of the rural nations, like in the jungles, there's villages that What about people who don't, don't get reached, know about Jesus? Like, would it be, he wouldn't be a just God if he's like, hey, you didn't hear about it. But that's your fault because you're supposed to go talk to him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, that's a good one. Uh, so, uh, what about people? About people who don't know Jesus, who never heard about him. Heard Jesus. All right, so we're just throwing questions out there. We're not trying to answer them right now. Just things that we can go over as we study the topic. The difference between what's symbolic and what's um, literal All right. in the description of hell in the word. Are literal and symbolic. All right. And at any time through this, as we're going, if you have a question, bring it up. Go ahead. Um, for those who will be in hell, will they know each other? Mm -hmm. Will it be a party, like uh, Ozzy Osbourne says? <laughs> um, yeah, will you will you know each other in hell? Or recognize family? You know? Alright. Let's just put recognize friends. Alright. There's people who claim to have died and went to hell and came back. And they have their stories. Whether they're true or not, I don't know. I think after we study this, you're going to get an idea, because I'm already starting to. Um, so, I look forward to it. So let's get started. Again, if you have any questions going through, bring them up and we'll write them down and we'll, we'll talk about them. Alright, so, let's get going. <clears throat> Old Testament view. So like I said, I want to start from the beginning. Alright, we're not going to just jump all over. We're going to go from beginning all the way through. What does the Bible say about hell? Okay, Old Testament view in the Bible, we're gonna, as we're going to read right now, the Old Testament talks about Sheol. All right? It doesn't say hell other than in some versions of the Bible, like the King James actually uses hell. Hell is a general term for a couple of different places. In, in the Old Testament, it, the word Sheol is used. Okay? And Sheol it refers to the grave or the abode of the dead. Um, it was believed that Sheol was one a place where not only humans went, but also animals. It was the grave. Good and bad, everybody went to Sheol. All right, that was the belief in the Old Testament. So, what we're going to look at today is I have some verses <coughs> over here. And um, we're going to look at all the scriptures in the Old Testament that mention Sheol. All of them. Alright, pull them all out. What does the Old Testament say about hell or Sheol? 
What, what can we gather from what the Old Testament teaches about it? Even the afterlife. What was their view in the Old Testament? All right, so we're going to spend like five minutes. I'm going to give each of you a couple teams some papers. And you guys are going to just look at them. And you can mark these if you want. But just give us an idea of some of the things that the Bible mentions about shell or eternal life. So we can we can understand what what they what they understood in the Old Testament. All right. So let's just make some teams. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I have six pages. Um, Sheol, way different than what we see life or what we know about it now. But what do we get from the Old Testament? Is we get that Sheol, like I said, this was their view of it, is believed that it all went to one place, whether human or animal. Everybody went to Sheol. No one could avoid it. And it was thought to be in the lowest parts of the earth. And really, when you open up a grave, you plop them in the ground. They didn't have graves that like that, though. Yeah. Yeah. You're, oh, that's a good point. Yeah, huh? That's new to us. I didn't think about that. Well, I think that everybody back in the day went to, to hell. That's I think, not true. I think that's why Jesus went to what get his people because salvation didn't start until him. Did everyone? Well, we know. by the law before Jesus. By everybody fell from the law. Well, let me tell you. Let me, one, super strict. one that would help with that is do you go to hell before judgment or after? I think that would maybe help with that question. Because when you die, do you just automatically, or do you actually get judged? And when does that happen? Does that happen? Jesus comes. Jesus right. Come? Just think about it. You know, some of those things. But I mean, like our sense of time is erased after mm -hmm. death. Mm -hmm. So, like. It's right after you die. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, absolutely. But do you get judged? Or, or you know, oops. Oh, oh, my bad. Are they? Yeah. Well, anyway, I mean, I. We'll answer it. We'll talk about it. It's good. Good question. So hold those. All right, so today we're just trying to understand the Old Testament view. It was very vague. All right, it was very vague. They didn't, they didn't know. Oh, oh, oh. everything we... <clears throat> seed. We know now, <clears throat> even about heaven, is limited. <clears throat> A couple of verses I want you to look at. If you could look them up really quickly. <clears throat> Isaiah 25.8, Isaiah 26.19, and Daniel 12.2, if some of you guys can help me with this. <clears throat> um, so, God's special revelation over time. It seems like God didn't throw everything out onto particular people at one time, that He reveals pieces of it over time. We don't see, we don't see what we're going to read right now until these books, Isaiah and Daniel. It's not in anything up until now. All right, so if whoever has 25.8, if you could please read it. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people will take, he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord, for the Lord has spoken. All right, so up until now, everything we read about Sheol is you're going, everybody's going, but we have a little glimpse of hope. And do you mind reading it one more time? He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord will get will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of all of His people He will take away from all that the Lord has spoken. All right, so he, he will He will wipe death out, wipe Sheol out. All right, that's what we're reading. He doesn't actually mention Sheol; talks about death, but He'll wipe it away, and He's going to wipe tears. So there's a glimmer of hope coming. Um, anybody have Isaiah twenty six nineteen? Dead shall live, their bodies shall rise. You who dwell in the dust, awake and sing for joy. For your for your dew is a dew of light, and the earth will give birth to the dead. Alright, so we haven't I, I haven't seen anything like that. I mean there's glimpses in Psalms and Proverbs, they get a little glimpses, but up until now, this is the most clearly articulated thing about ri rising, like resurrection. From the dead. Um, up until now, that's not really very clear. 
said. So, you know, we, we know what we know now in light of everything that's happened, but what, what, what did they know? All right, so in Isaiah 26, and let's read the last one, Daniel 12, 2. If anyone has it. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Eee. Old Testament. That's probably the only verse. That's Old Testament. That's, that's the only verse. That's like the mo that's the most you're gonna get. And can you read it one more time? And many of those who sleep in the dust of the other of the earth shall wake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Jeez. All right. So it sounds like eternal life, eternal death, eternal death. shame, and everlasting contempt. All right, that's, that's the one instance where it's really clear um, in the Old Testament. So, today the whole point was for us to get, a, to get an understanding of what they believed in the Old Testament times. Obviously, they had a glimmer of it. And I know what I think was cool, is that it seems like they didn't know anything about heaven. It seems like they didn't know anything about hell. But I want to read you a verse before we close today. Um, that was pretty awesome. Uh, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 13, if you have it, you can go there with me. Hebrews 11, 13 is it. You know, they didn't know everything we know now. They didn't know Jesus was going to rise from the dead and we were going to have eternal life and it was so clear. But something about them knew it. I don't know how it was crazy. Hebrews 11, 13. Um, I'm having a hard time finding it. Here we go. It was by faith. Uh, 31. Uh, all these people died, so it's talking about everybody, uh, Abraham, everybody up until then, the prophets, believing what God had promised them. They did not receive what was promised, but they saw it from a distance and welcomed it. They agreed that they were foreigners and nomads here on the earth. Obviously, people who say such things are looking forward to a country they can't call their own. They can call their own. If they had longed for a country they came from, they would have, they would have gone back. But they were looking for a better place, a heavenly homeland. That is why God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He has prepared a city for them. So what he's saying in Hebrews is that, you know, he starts. He goes from the beginning. Enoch, Adam, you know, uh, Samson, Abraham. He says them all. They were all foreigners in a land. They're looking for a home. And it doesn't say anything about heaven or anything, but God is, you know, the Bible is telling us that they had this hope that this is not where I belong. I belong somewhere else, and I'm looking forward to it. The symbolism is the promised land. They were traveling to it, that they were looking forward to something else. And this part is pretty cool. That's why God's not ashamed to be called their God, for He has prepared a city for them. Uh, so all the Old Testament, you know, everybody who went through, maybe they didn't have it as clear as we do now, but they had something, and they were, they were rolling with it, and they knew God was going to come through. And God was, He's proud to be called their God because they had hope. They had hope in Him, which is pretty awesome, and He's prepared a city for them. So maybe they didn't have a clear understanding of heaven, but God, they had enough to know that God has something. And God says, I'm, I'm preparing them a city. It's pretty cool. Um, and I, I just, it, the last thing is that, you know, everything we know now, that we know that baptism, uh, baptism is death and resurrection. All right, we know that that's the symbolism. That when we get baptized, we're saying, I'm actually going to die. Or, I'm actually dying. What do you say? We're actually dead already. Dead. I'm actually already dead. The old you died. You've already been resurrected. And that's really what it's all about. And, and I've been thinking about that. I was like, well, these, the Old Testament, how do they live? And I, I think that we should, we should have a whole different way of living because we're already dead. We're not, we've already died. And we're, now we're actually already living. And it's this eternal life's already going. You know, it's in us, um, and I think that should change the way we look at life. Because we're talking, this whole series we're doing is all about eternity, hell or heaven. And in Colossians, we won't read it, but he says, 
set your mind on things above because that's where your life is. It's hidden with Jesus. So as I'm studying this, I'm, lurking, I'm thinking about that. Like, how am I looking at life? Should I be focused on eternity? Should I be focused on heaven? Because I think the Bible's pretty clear is that that is definitely our focus. Definitely something we should be living for, focused on, because we're actually, our old life died, you know, our old passions, and now we're living solely for Jesus. And I, I, you know, I think that's the challenge for us is to, to live like we're dead to our old self, but alive to the new one. And if you want to read it, it's in Colossians, it's a pretty awesome verse. And I'll show Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15, I've been reading that chapter, that's really all about resurrection. So today, with Old Testament, next week, we start Jesus, what did he say? And Jesus mentions hell more than he does heaven. Crazy. <laughs> So we're going to look at that. So thank you guys. Uh, let's, let's just pray and we're going to wrap that up and I'll deliver your phones back.